Thank you very much, Felix Preston. Um, now we will meet Martin Nilsson, who is Chief Operating Officer in uh, Sustaina, a job he has had since 2015. And Sustaina is a sustainable think tank with a base in Copenhagen. Um, to avoid any communication problems, uh, Martin will give his lecture in English, just for you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, and uh, I'm so excited, I'm so happy, I'm really pleased and honored to be here today. I just have one complaint. I have been watching SCAM like any other Scandinavian <laughs> to the degree that I'm now fluent in Norwegian. And what happens only after 30 seconds talking to the organizers of Innova, they ask me, I assume you will do the presentation in English? There you go, that's the complaint, it's now out there. We can move on and go back to the excitement. I have spent about 20 plus years of my career working for private international businesses, it includes Unilever, and the last one was uh, Carlsberg, or Ringnes, or EC Dahl, as you would probably call it here in Trondheim. And I spent my career uh, trying to translate the big ambitions, the big visions, the big stories into concrete action, into concrete business. And this is a few cases, this is a few insights from that experience I will share with you here today. For the past year, I've been working for Sustainia. It's a global think tank. It's based in Copenhagen, uh, and it uh, does mapping uh, of uh, great sustainable solutions, and I will share some of those with you here today, just to try to be concrete and action-oriented when we talk about circular economy, which I admit can seem a little bit as abstract, a little bit distant from your daily business. The starting point for you in this room, for Norway as a nation, I think is absolutely amazing. It's fantastic. You really got something going for you. When I listened to the previous speakers, your minister, the, uh, the managing director of Innova, I think, Norway, you really have a competitive advantage here. And sustainability is the new word for competitiveness, I believe. You have something to share, you have something to contribute. I mean, you have the funding, you have the long-term commission, you have commitment, you have the vision to excel and to make a sustainable world and sustainable business. And this is what we need. For one thing which we definitely need is you. As the previous speaker said, it's all about people. It's all about being a leader, an opportunity leader, a sustainability leader, a business leader. And in my personal career, I always found that sometimes a little bit difficult to be a leader when it comes to circular economy, when it comes to sustainability, because being a leader requires having a goal you can lead towards. Therefore, last year was, a, or two years ago, 2015 was a fantastic year, extraordinary year, because at that point in time, 193 nation leaders came together and committed to the same global goals. So now we have global goals to lead towards. And these global goals, they are complex, they are overarching, but they require leadership. They cannot be achieved by nation leaders, they cannot be achieved by business leaders, but they can be achieved by us together in partnership. But first, and foremost, remember that you are needed as leaders. So creating the future business, it's all about leadership. It's all about focusing on delivering on the sustainable development goals. And talking about circular economy and talking about business, I think looking at goal number 12 about responsible consumption and responsible production is a good starting point for that. It doesn't say specifically that you need to do circular economy, but the principles behind circular economy, the elements, the drivers of circular economy is definitely 
the basis of a responsible consumption and responsible production pattern. The good news is that leaders are already appearing across the world. You are definitely being vocal, committed, you are here. I understand that there's even a waiting list for this conference. You should make the room bigger because we need more people, we need more exciting, we need a global movement to make this happen. At Sustainia, we've been for the past six years mapping some of the pioneers, some of the solutions, some of the best practices in this area. And we've researched more than 4,000 different solutions. We have mapped more than 40 different opportunities, market opportunities, which you can explore, market opportunities occurring on the back end of the global goals. And it's exciting to see the appetite and the commitment and the interest in making these global goals happen. Our reports have been read hundreds of thousands of time and it's been shared and we've seen commitment and engagement on social media in hundreds of millions of cases. So time is now to join it and jump on board. Question is, how do you do it? Uh, I think a good starting point is to look at the principles behind the circular economy. So what is circular economy about? Well, I think if you just, one important take out is to see circular economy as a way to eliminate the concept of waste and make endless loops of biological, biological matters and of technical matters. Whenever I showed this, slide to my CEOs in the past, I was always excited because I thought it was important to understand the concept. And in nine out of 10 cases, I have to tell you that I lost them in a matter of minutes. They started flicking their mobile phones. They, uh, some of them were less polite and they say, Morten, it's nice that you are talking about the circular economy, it's nice that you are talking about saving the world, it's nice that you talk about stakeholders, but you know, I have a business to attend, I have stakeholders. So, I'm showing this to you to share something not to do, but if you have that kind of CEO in front of you, or maybe you're that kind of CEO yourself, then maybe think of circular economy as a mean, as a way, as a tool, as a mindset, which can help you develop your business, which can help you innovate new product, new services, new business models that makes your business more profitable and at the same time makes it more legitimate, makes it more relevant and appealing in the eyes of consumers and customers. So, if you didn't like the previous slide, maybe you like this better, or maybe you just like the headline better. That's fair enough, that's a good starting point, because we're not doing circular economy because of the sake of being circular, we're doing it to make the business more profitable, we're making it to make the world more sustainable, we're doing it for the people and the planet, because we don't have a choice actually. If we don't do it, we will overconsume resources. We cannot host another couple of billion people on the planet who wants to live at the same standard as we do. We have to work smarter. We have to rethink the way we do business. We have to reduce the amount of resources that we put into production. We have to reuse more materials. We have to recycle more materials. And all these will take out cost of the business and it will make new appealing and relevant products and help you grow your business, be more profitable and better for people and planet. So think of it as that way. With this mindset, uh, I'd like to share with you a couple of cases how other business leaders have approached this, how they have reinvented their business model, how they have recycled, reduced, or reduced materials, as small steps towards a circular model, but a big step towards a more sustainable world and a more profitable business. The first example is 
from your neighbor, from the, your backyard. It's from Denmark. It's a business called Viga. It's, a, it's sort of a, puts access to products over ownership of products. Any of you who have kids will know that when they're very small, they grow fast. You buy clothes, you throw it out. You buy more clothes, you throw it out. You buy clothes, you throw it out. It's very costly. It's very timely. It's over-consuming resources. So this company offers you the opportunity to lease organic kitswear. You use it for however you, long you need to use it, maybe one week, maybe one month, and then you send it back and you're given a new set of clothes for your kid. So it's based on a subscription model. It saves Danish families thousands of dollars every year. It saves the environment, uh, the overconsumption of resources, and it puts back the clothes into recyclable loops. There's also the social benefit of the clothes being organic so that you save your little newborn from being exposed to unnecessary, unwanted chemicals. Great model. Very simple. You can argue, is it 100% circular economy? Maybe not, but it's taking a big step towards that. It's innovating the business model. It's innovating new services. It's changing the game from giving ownership to products to giving access to products. Another example from Nigeria. Here is a big issue that smallhold farmers do not have the capital, they don't have the resources to invest in tractors. This has the negative complication that the food production is low, there's shortage of food, the quality is not up to the necessary standards, the economy of the local food markets is very poor. Then some clever people came together and said, what if we put up a sharing system so that people can lease or rent a tractor? These areas are big, so they said, what if we make it possible to lease or rent the tractor on people's mobile phone? And what if we make it possible to finance the lease or the rent with micro loans? What if we build in a GPS into the tractors so that we can monitor the performance and the service need of the tractor via the GPS so that we can provide the necessary service just in time? So this is what they did, and this has now fueled, initiated a new economy for the Nigeria smallhold farmers. They provide the waste majority of the food for those communities. And it's now growing, in the, the quality is improving, and it has sort of been the basis of a whole new economy with a new finance system, a new service sector, a better food sector. The same, you, you find similar examples uh, where people involve the consumer to a higher degree. For instance, uh, iCollect is putting up collection systems where you hand in used clothes in containers, and this is working across different continents across the world and together in partnership with big companies like H&M and other big manufacturers of clothes and apparel. You can also use that thinking, the rethink, the reduce, recycle, reuse thinking to innovate new kind of products. 30 to 50% of the global food production is wasted. It's thrown out. It's kind of absurd. It's kind of depressing, I think, when you look at how much food is actually needed to feed the growing populations. And then we throw out 30 to 50%. What if we could use that? What if we could capture those nutrients and put them into closed cycles? 
And this is what JM Technologies have done. Uh, it started in China and it has spread to other countries. So they take food waste, and they put some larvae in it, they eat the food, they grow, they clean up the larvae and they use them to feed fish stocks and animals. Uh, animals. In this way you not only capture the, what would otherwise be food waste, but you also eliminate the need for things like overfishing or overexploitation of farmland, agricultural land. You see the same, same kind of thinking in uh, Norway here with Biomega. They are taking what used to be considered waste and turning it into a useful resource. They are, so to speak, upcycling the nutrients. They are upcycling the waste. They are upcycling the materials. And this is what Circular Economy App is about. It's generating, it's providing a, the basis for a new sector, for new products, new services, new value creation. An important element in making this is to engage and involve the consumers. To make them excited and understand that they need to do their contribution to making these closed cycle work. And this is an example from, uh, from UK where Carlsberg is making consumer events at the uh, big music festivals to make them excited and motivated and engaged and involved in handing back used cans for recycling. And they understand, like I do, that Vikings are obviously Norwegian. So we want to pay credit to that. But even so, it's a strong communication tools. And the English, well, they think Norway, Denmark, Carlsberg, same thing. They make this campaign as part of a more technical based cradle to cradle inspired partnership where they are closing the loop between the suppliers, their customers, the consumers, and the partners who are upcycling materials to be products at the same level or a higher level. If you look at all these cases all together and look at, look at it from a helicopter perspective, look at it from, from the above, what characterizes all these solutions, and I've just shown you six, and as I told you, we've been researching 4,000. Not all of them circular, but a lot of them have a circular element to it. But if you look at these opportunities from the above and look at what, what is sort of characterizing them, the trend is that they all, they all been innovated, they all been created by leaders who was looking for opportunities at the edge of their core business. So if you're in health, if you're in pharma, they've been looking to food, what are they doing in the food sector? The food sector been looking at, what are they doing in the water sector? The water sector is looking at, what are they doing in energy? And what's amazing and exciting to see is how these different sectors tend to converge, tend to come together, new market opportunities, new solutions then appear at the edges at the intersection between these traditional markets. And the common denominator for all that is technology. I mean, you only have to look at the finance sector to see how the technology has changed the finance sector. And the same is happening to other sectors as well. You saw the example with Hello Tractor, how technology was also part of the new solution it couldn't happen without the new technology. You see things like blockchain is disrupting the traditional markets and how sustainability, how circular economy, how technology is suddenly becoming two forces working in the same direction. This is a part of the work we have done with the Norwegian DNVGL and with the United Nations Global Compact and Sustainia. And we are sort of uh, helping businesses and organizations and nations develop their own GPS system for how to navigate in these new sustainable markets. 
And there are just three ground rules to that. One is look outside your traditional sector. The other one is apply an opportunity mindset. Don't be demotivated by risk, but see it as a way to rescue your business. And then understand and map your opportunities. That will, in a matter of just a few months, be easier and readily available at your fingertips. Together with DNVGL and together with United Nations Global Compact, Sustainia is building a global opportunity explorer. It will, be, it will feature all the market opportunities, and I just gave you a sneak peek into that, but it will feature all the market opportunities. It will feature all the sustainability cases to inspire you. And we foresee that this Explorer platform, supported by the United Nations and made possible by DNVGL, will be the go-to place for you if you are looking for new partners. And as we saw, partnership is necessary. It will be the go-to place for new innovations. It will be the go-to place if you're looking for new market opportunities. It's launching in April, and you are invited. It's an open innovation platform. So we invite you to join the movement. And how to do that? Well, you are always invited to talk to me or to GNV or to UN Global Compact, whatever you prefer, so that together we can innovate the world of tomorrow. And the last takeout, I already mentioned it, but I just want to emphasize that. It's, it's all about leadership. It's all about you. It's actually not circular economy changing business. It's leaders changing the business for business to become more circular, to become more sustainable. And if you express that leadership, and if you emotionally engage your people, your customers, your consumers, then we can innovate the world we need and meet the 2030 goals. Thank you very much. Stay with me. Come on, stay with me. Um, I want to contribute. After having heard you, I want to contribute. Great. Is that good? You got um, the first join <laughs> of the movement. <laughs> well, because when you said, uh, let's uh, lose the concept of waste, I thought, really? Really? But then you persuaded me. Um, and we've got a question for you mm -hmm. from the audience. Can we do it? Can we try to do it on Norsk? Yes, Norsk? Yeah, yeah. Norsk? Yes, yes. The question is, can it help? og gi unge mennesker stemmerett, 16-17 år, bør de få stemme til parlamentet fordi de er mer opptatt av klima enn du og jeg er? Det ville jo være et interessant forslag. Altså, du har fullstendig ret. Altså, når man kigger på ungdommen, når man ser på nye generationer, de er committed, de forstår det, de har det rigtige mindset, så hvorfor ikke invitere dem ombord? Ok. Da går vi for 16-åringer med stemmerett her etter, eller kanskje ikke. Tusen takk skal du ha. Takk for det. Tusen takk.